Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'd love to talk about things I wish I could tell to my younger self, being a little lost at the beginning of my own journey. And I also share the process of one of my latest drawings. I picked five little tips, but there are certainly more things that deserve our attention, but I'll talk about the others in my next videos. Also, if you like to watch the real-time process of this drawing and its narrated version, the narrated process, please check out my Patreon account. There are more than 200 videos right now, full of real-time processes, tips and tutorials. And it would be great if you consider becoming part of my Patreon family. So let's get into the first one, and that is uh, about the materials for drawing. What I would tell to my younger self is you don't have to use expensive professional tools for your creation. When I started I used to look for a professional paper to draw on and I felt like my drawing shall have less value or I can't get to another level just because I draw on an ordinary paper. The most frequent question I get from you is what brand of paper I use to create such a smooth and soft kind of shading. You know, for the most of my drawings I use just an ordinary paper, no artistic brand. Just a paper I found in a local stationery, not even in a local art store, it's just a sketchbook. What I do care about is the surface of the paper, I don't look for the perfect one. I just look for the one that would respond to the pencil the way I want to, smooth or rough, depending on if I want the surface to be visible in the final drawing or not, that's all. The smooth surface helps me to achieve the softer results. But what I would tell to my younger self is uh, it's more about your way of drawing, the soft approach uh, of your shading and the gentle touch of the pencil. Just focus on this always. And the same may be applied regarding the, the erasers I use for precise erasing. You don't need a professional tool for it. You can use any hard eraser and adjust it for yourself by creating a simple sharp edge on it. It's great the brands make these special tools for us. It's much easier, right? But it doesn't mean that you can't create something beautiful without them. The second thing I would like to talk about is to make it all more comfortable for yourself. Just create better conditions for your creating. It can be using plants, candles, music, anything that makes you feel safe and comfortable. For me there is one really practical tip and that is using an easel for drawing. I used to draw on a table and as I was drawing a few hours a day my back started to hurt and I did not feel comfortable in the position at all. So I looked for some options uh, that might be more suitable for me and I found out that it's much more comfortable to draw on an easel. I have a little table easel and it helps me to keep my back straight and overall it's I feel so much better in that position and it just makes the process easier for me and there is some more ease in the process, more lightness in the process and it doesn't matter if you are drawing a larger scale of drawing or just a little one it doesn't really matter and you can also use a, a larger easel, not only the table easel, it's totally up to you it's stable so you can put your hand on the easel and have a stable support for your drawing hand uh, which is important, especially while working on smaller details. I try to make a lot of breaks to stretch or to go for a walk or uh, to do some other type of work that doesn't require sitting, drawing or writing. The third thing I would like to talk about is using references. While well, using reference photos for drawing can teach us a lot, it's really helpful and I totally recommend using them f to draw from, especially in realism. But what I tend to do when I started as a beginner, and actually I believe many of us do so, 
is uh, trying to create exactly the same image as it is on the photograph and setting this as a goal. Well, during my journey I realized that uh, references are about much more than just recreating them. Observing can teach us a lot about the object we want to draw, uh, the natural structures, how the light affects the appearance of the form, how the object responds is naturally to its surroundings and much more. And they're here in your process for you, helping you to learn. They shall serve you as a guide. And being aware of this helped me to release some of the pressure I felt as a beginner. I do not create an expectation for my drawing to look like the, the reference itself. This takes a lot of pressure from you and uh, you won't be disappointed because it's almost impossible to recreate exactly the same image. So um, you will never be fully happy with uh, the result when you set this as a goal. One thing that I realized on my journey is uh, <laughs> to be aware of the stages of the process, the steps. And in this case I mean the one concrete piece of drawing that's on your desk at the moment. In the past I used to stop working on a concrete drawing just because I did not like it before I finished it. Not being conscious of the building process that it should look like this, it's just right because I'm in the middle of making. You will go over a few times with a few layers of shading or you'll, you'll reshape the outline slowly into the final result. And try to put it this way, this stage is not something to be fixed, it's totally alright, it should be, it should look like this because you just created the second layer of shading and it can't look like a 3D form already. It is not about fixing mistakes, it is alright like this because you are going through stages, natural stages of the process, everyone needs to go through them to get to the result. That might look different for everyone but it does not mean it's wrong. And I believe there is a different energy of the process when you are aware of this. There are two ways. In the first case, you can go through the process believing there is something wrong with the drawing all alone. It can even make you give up working on it. Or you can be aware that it should look like this and you are building it up slowly from nothing to something. And the same approach can be applied also to your whole art progress. <laughs> it's like when you plant the seed and then you come back to it regularly to see how it grows. Every time you see it, you can be either grateful and happy for the little progress you see, or you can be disappointed that there is no flower yet. In the latter, you will find yourself disappointed for the most of the time, and it can even make you give up before you get somewhere. It's up to you. It's just the same thing, but different way of seeing it can provide it with another meaning for you or another feeling from it. And it can even bring a different result in the end. One of the most important tips I would like to say to my younger self is be gentle with your process. Actually, I'm learning it. I'm learning to be more gentle with my own process and I can see it uh, helps me in many ways. When I don't feel like drawing anymore, I just feel like having a break. I do have a break. <laughs> and what's the difference? When I do not push myself and I do not uh, let the time limit to be my guidance, I can focus more on the process itself. I can take the time to enjoy it and add soft touches to the drawing or be aware of uh, the purpose of it. When I make a break, when I take a break and uh, come back to the drawing, then I can see it from a little different perspective. There are many benefits <laughs> when you don't push yourself and, and you don't stress out because you just don't feel like drawing all the time. 
it doesn't mean that you are not productive because then uh, when you don't feel like drawing you can do another type of work uh, that is not creative or you just don't need to feel in a specific mood for it it actually makes me happy knowing that the gentle approach uh, may lead to a better feeling from both the process and the result as well so that's all for me for today i hope it was helpful in case you liked the video please give it a thumbs up also share it with your friends that might find these tips useful for them as well and of course there are some more tips i would like to share in my next video so make sure to subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time bye